Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and this is a base identification video. As you guys know, in these types of videos, we look at different bases, Town Hall 9, 10, and 11, talk about key components of their layout and what attack should be used on that base uh, given those key components and how the base is built. So the idea is to help you guys uh, identify what type of attack to use on different bases when you're scouting them out. So we'll get to the bases in just a moment. First, I do want to give a quick announcement um, to my subscribers. Today is the last day to sign up for my Patreon page and be a part of the Patreon war that I'm doing. It's uh, for patrons only and it is going to be a war that I'm going to live stream. There's going to be all my patrons and a few uh, One Hive Genesis members hopefully participating in a war that will be streamed. All of it or at least part of it will be live streamed for you guys. I don't know the details yet but it's something I'm doing for the month of August so uh, it's right at the end of August so it's your last chance to sign up for the Patreon page. Thank you to everyone who signed up. There's also other perks as well that you get. I really appreciate the support and I just wanted to give that quick announcement in case uh, uh, you planned on signing up you should do it now if you do uh, so you still get that benefit for the month of August so that being said let's get into this video and the first base is one that really annoys me because um, I tried to attack this and I was unsuccessful with it basically it's not that hard of a base it's it's a good base for just a uh, a three golem attack to just come at this base with golems, bowlers, especially because it has a small CC. Um, that makes it even easier to just send in a big bowler kill squad with the king, the queen, and typically the queen at least can snipe that town hall coming at it from the side. You want to come at this base from the side. Uh, the attackers on this side came, or on this base, came down here. You can do either side though, really. It's pretty much symmetrical. So anyway, the main uh, problem is the queen oftentimes will not take the jump over the air defense. That happened on one of my attacks when I attacked this base. Uh, it happened to another person as well. You have to force the queen to the town hall. When you have a base that's laid out like this that has all these rings around the town hall, it's meant to try to suck your troops in one direction. And because the heroes are down here, they're going to pull everything down. So you need to create a really nice funnel down here. You can't just come across the base in a wave because everything's going to gravitate towards this eagle and the odds of getting the town hall are very diminished so that being said um, this is Devin with the attack typically not a 10 v 11 attacker uh, but does a good job on this base here let's take a look at it um, still doing the same three golem approach but the timing is different he's gonna wall break in to get an even better funnel at the bottom here uh, actually not quite the bottom um, a little bit higher up sends in two golems bowlers rage really clearing things out, uh, goes ahead and pre-poisons the CC even though it doesn't actually start coming out yet. Um, and then delayed is that third golem. So it's not completely separate things, uh, it's just delayed. So that way you can see the path has clearly been created to the town hall, already has 35% of the base taken out. Here's that final kill squad push, there's the jump. Um, the uh, I think that was a bomb tower that just went off, but the bowlers are fine, doesn't need a heal, just goes ahead and freezes the inferno, rages those bowlers through, has one more rage for them still, and it takes a little while because the uh, CC troops cause a little bit of a delay, but right here the queen has nowhere to go because of that funnel, she steps up, grabs the town hall, uh, doesn't even have to use the ability quite yet, then pops both his heroes at about the same time, and will clean up the base for about 54% here, a little bit close, would have liked to see a few minions, Oh, there's the minions. <laughs> there they are. Should have dropped them at the beginning of the attack. Maybe he forgot because uh, the eagle can be a risk. But I guess he figured he'll probably get the eagle anyway. Uh, good, good stuff. 55%. That'll do it. We'll back out and uh, we'll take a look at some more attacks. You know, we don't see many dips, but I think when I can, I want to show these dip attacks, at least one of them in these types of videos, because it's just like 9v9 almost. Um, it's obviously going to be a little bit easier than a 9v9, especially um, a fresh hit, but uh, it's still something that 
we, you see a lot of fails, and it's so important for these wars. I love the bowler bounces on the mortars. Those are key, not just for creating funnels, but those mortars, you know, they're defenses. They're on the outside of the base. They don't do much, but they do uh, damage, and you just want to get them out of the way. Not a bad trade to drop those bowlers, take out those mortars. Uh, but taking a look at this base here, I always forget to uh, show the scout view and talk about it first. I, I always want to get into the attack right away. One thing you're going to notice is when it's a little bit more spread out, don't rush to using dragons or miners. They're good for compact bases that you can kind of roll through. But when the pathing is a little bit more uncertain to the Inferno Towers, there's a little bit more guesswork in the pathing and everything's a little bit more spread out. Think about instead of using miners or dragons, going with a more defensive targeting plan such as a Laloon or a... Uh, a hog attack and the difference between a town hall 10 attempting this and a town hall 11 attempting this is that the town hall 11 has two uh, things that are very key that's the warden's ability for the kill squad which gets the kill squad that extra push over the the place by the inferno that typically takes out the town hall 10 kill squad the uh, warden's eternal tome will give them that push past there even deeper in the base then there's that extra spell. You can bring three heal spells for your hogs, which is so much more helpful. Um, so it basically uh, has two key things a Town Hall 10 doesn't. Now right here, watch, um, this is the place where the Town Hall 10 kill squad would be taken out typically. Has a great uh, eternal tome, gets all his troops in it, and you can see gets that much deeper in the base. The bowlers stay up longer, the king stays up longer, and the queen and the warden sit back and snipe defenses. He's uh, able to get the queen taken out and the king, so gets both heroes there. Great push. Now here come the hogs through the base. You can see has a freeze for that inferno, which is always important if you have an inferno still up on a hog attack, especially with some defenses around it. There's the freeze. Gets the um, looking like he was getting going to get the expo. Doesn't quite get it, but the inferno being frozen was enough. And the king doesn't go down. That's one issue. Um, and also, you only have one poison spell. That's the only downside. You have the extra elixir spell, but you only have one dark spell uh, for these hog attacks at Town Hall 11. So oftentimes, there'll be some skellies on your hogs. Almost got the king. Would have been much easier if you got the king. But still, has that last heal spell. The hogs will get through here. Uh, that giant bomb won't do anything to them. Troll Tesla in the corner. Um... Makes it take a little bit longer, but this base is finished. The archers take out the uh, king, and then we'll fast forward to the end here. Has a few cleanup wizards along the outside of the base. So when the base is a little bit more spread out, think about doing a more defensive targeting approach instead of just trying to roll through it with miners or dragons, because those are the most effective, but they can face some problems against these more spread out bases um, in some situations. So let's move on to number 16 two 10v10s and two 9v9s to show. This first one, uh, I'll just go ahead and show the replay and I'll pause it um, so you guys can see what troops were used as well as we talk about it. So this base, first thing you gotta notice, the point defense is lower level, making it easier for both a hog attack or a La Luna attack. Typically point defense is the main uh, culprit, especially on a La Luna attack. You gotta be careful if there's really high level wizard towers or archer towers. Um, but this base focused on the Expos and the Infernos, so lower level point defense and some lower level wizard towers makes it easier for pretty much any attack, so I won't say that's a huge indicator that you should uh, use La Loon. The bigger indicator is going to be this air defense by the Inferno Tower area, and these are very common layouts with the Inferno Towers two compartments. I made a whole video on how to charge an Inferno Tower. You can just look it up in the search, you know, One Hive Gazette, Inferno Tower, Queen Charge or whatever. Um, made a whole video on how to funnel your queen in here. But the extra benefit is there's an air defense right here as well. So that's basically if you get the queen in, you get both an air defense and an Inferno Tower, a huge leg up on this base already. Um, the king was used just to get the queen in there, just for funneling. He walks down, takes out this low-level archer tower, um, some trash buildings. But the main thing of getting these two buildings plus a free archer tower taken out, the CC is not going to be an issue. It's a lava hound, and the queen is, you know, obviously going to be an issue. But there's not my, many. Um, there's not going to be many. What am I thinking? Uh, 
there is a bomb tower next to her, but the queen takes it out. So when you think about using these skellies, you gotta be careful of wizard towers or bomb towers near the queen. They're gonna kill your skeletons before they can kill the queen. But the bomb tower goes down, which makes this queen very vulnerable. Two uh, skelly traps is plenty to take her out. Or not skelly traps, two skelly spells is plenty to take her out. So there's the king, there's a baby dragon, gonna clear out these buildings, then drop in the queen right behind them. Wall break in, uh, textbook deployment. Go back and watch my video on how to funnel the queen in if you're curious, because uh, I made a whole video on it that uh, can help you guys uh, if you're still wondering how to funnel the queen in. But basically, does a great job, drops her high up, lets her walk down to the point of the wall breakers. A skelly spell comes out, but luckily there's no point defense on her, so she takes it out. Uh, the inferno is going to slowly start melting her down, but just the inferno tower and the mortar, nothing else on her. So can save the ability until she steps up for this DE storage. Uh, right here, I think he, uh, Templar, realized, okay, the queen's really low. Can't let her die to a mortar shell. So he goes ahead and pops her right before that mortar gets there because uh, that could have been close. But right here, this is actually pretty important, that bomb tower going down because that allows the skelly spells to be much more successful, especially because the bomb tower won't target loons or hounds. It would just sit there and pick off the skeleton. So you got to be careful about that. But it goes down. So now here come the haste spells and... There's the rage. Typically, you rage the loons, then also get the skellies inside that rage to get double value for it. The loon pathing was a little bit weird, but they go back for that expo, take it out, then they go on to the next inferno tower. I like that heal spell. You know, two back end wizard towers, you gotta heal um, at that point. Plus, there's a test the farm, so great heal value. All these loons getting the value of that heal, or at least a big group of them are. Then has that haste spell to keep everything moving over the. Inf over the uh, test the farm and finally one more haste for the last bit of this base but that's it gg uh, the full health loons cannot be taken out by these last few defenses and that will do it for this one nice attack of templar assassin you guys also might have noticed that there was uh, a lot of wizard towers in range of air defenses another great sign to use la loon when you can tank those wizard towers with your lava hounds uh, even better. The Lava Hounds are meant to tank. The more they tank, the better it is for La Loon because the better your loons will do, the more successful they'll be. So, um, one more Town Hall 10 to take a look at here. You know, one thing I noticed is Templar should have brought an archer to drag that uh, CC Hound to the bottom of the base just so it wouldn't be an issue for cleanup. It ended up not doing anything, but you got to be careful sometimes with that. Uh, let's move on here to a mass minor attack and this base I hit on a live attack and I think someone even commented like hey why didn't you hit this with miners you said lower level bases should be hit with miners and I think they're right they kind of used my own advice against me because that's a good point and on the on the first attack my only concern was if it was a small CC that can ruin miners and it's a difficult CC to lure out um, for the most part it's pretty much protected I guess there might be some opportunities down here, but I was concerned about the CC in that live attack video. Anyway, it's still a good base for miners, especially knowing it's a hound CC. Also, you, when you think about using miners, it's basically going through the base from one inferno tower to the other. And one thing that's uh, very helpful about this base for a miner attack is the king, if you drop him on this side, gets in here, gets all the way into that wizard tower. So. The king, even though he can't go inside the base, he can get very close to the inside of the base. And if you look at what he's taking out, he's forcing miners pretty much to the core of the base. So even though the king can't do that great of a job funneling, he's able to walk pretty far uh, towards the core. And that's one thing on some other bases, it's difficult on the king side to funnel anything besides that first layer of trash buildings, whereas because the base is really skinny right here, the king gets pretty close uh, to the core and funnels the miners very well. The queen's dropped up here to take out these defenses. A bomb tower is helpful. Um, then the pathing is pretty good. One inferno tower through the core, other inferno tower. I think he uses one rage for the core, which is good if you're using a mass miner attack. Um, a rage for the core is not a bad idea, especially if you have four other heal spells. You know, might as well do it. Okay, so the queen goes down up top, the king goes down there, uh, drops the miners in pretty much right away. That way the heroes do more for you instead of just... Um, being taken out by defenses, the miners will help tank, so everything moves through at the same time. 
Uh, the king tri triggers a giant bomb, which is pretty important. There's the poison spell on the loon. He brought a skelly spell. I would have liked to see another poison, because if that balloon does not die, it can ruin an attack. So I typically like to have uh, two poisons just to be safe. And if the loon goes down, I drop the other poison on the heroes. Uh, they actually pathed past that one inferno which can be an issue when you have the two tile moat around the inferno towers but they went back for it fortunately and then they continue on one group is already at the bottom down there with the king's barbarians and stuff so they will kind of go towards that bottom tesla farm the other group is working in the uh, top part of the base there by the wizard tower take that out um, a little bit of a concern with all these wizard or all these uh, Teslas. I would have brought a back end loon or two, like you guys saw in my live attack, a few sprinkled loons to take out those Teslas. Might have been a good idea, um, but Boudreaux elects to just overpower the base with miners, and it works out pretty nicely. Has plenty of them left up by the end of this attack. Lava Hound just sits there, can't do anything. Nice three star. Let's take a look at two 9v9s, then we'll wrap this video up. <clears throat> okay, uh, 21. Sorry if you hear my dog in the background. He's kind of walking around back there. Uh, this base, let me see what it was. This was a good queen walk hog base. Um, I've talked in the past about if the queen is exposed like she is, oftentimes just go ahead and queen walk her and that can get you some good value. You don't even have to use a kill squad. You can send those hogs right in. Now we talk about hog lanes, you know, lanes that your hogs will go through that can be healed. You know, they're about the width of a heal spell. So about two to three defenses wide and uh, they, your hogs just move through them and it's the most ideal way to deploy hogs. So if we take a look at this base here, uh, the queen can walk from right around this mortar towards the top of the base here. She won't get that expo, which is one downside of this walk. But besides that, it's a pretty good walk, takes out defenses, then she'll come around the corner eventually and start working on some of these cannons, which you know there has to be some spring traps in there, uh, taking a look at the layout right there. Then at the bottom, uh, pretty good value from the king. You can drop him down here. He will tank. I think he even... I don't think he takes out the defensive king. The defensive king's too far inside the base. But he comes in, he takes out a few mortars, and he basically just uh, wraps around the base, tanking, taking out a few of the mortars, and clearing out some trash to make sure there's no time fail. So let's go ahead and play the replay, and we'll see exactly how it developed. But let me just say the hog lane then becomes starting right here, uh, moving through the base just across. Now, it does get wide up in this area. The hogs kind of split. Some go to the top, some go down below towards the expo area. So that's one downside, not the best hog lane. But initially, the hogs move through in one nice unit that can be healed in one heal spell. So that is one upside. And by the time they get to the back end of the base, the queen has gone around anyway, and there's enough hogs to finish off the base and to uh, take it out with the remaining heal spells. So J Money uh, coming at this base here. Wizards for the funnel, pretty easy queen funnel because she cannot target that expo, so she has nowhere to go but towards the top of the base now. Healers go down on her and she'll just walk up. We'll go ahead and fast forward just for sake of time here. Also, I like the wizards up there in the archer to keep her close to the base. Don't have her waste time on trash. You want her targeting defenses. Sorry about that. Almost fast forward through the attack. Uh, there's the rage and the poison on the enemy queen. Gets her taken out all with one rage spell. Then while the archer tower is being tanked on the king and while the expo is being tanked on the queen, I think it switches in just a moment, but the hogs sneak into here and take out that expo. So very nice usage of his both his heroes that were tanking. Lava Hound in the CC doesn't even have to lure it out. This must have been a cleanup attack uh, because he, it looked like he knew it was Lava Hound. Uh, the king walking through, taking out the mortars, tanking for the hogs, hasn't even had to use the ability yet. The first heal was good, like I said, was able to heal that entire group. Then they split. Um, a few go towards the top, to the, towards that bomb tower. Most go down south by the expo. Nice poison spell on the king and the skellies. If you have skellies up and the king is also up, try to overlap your poison so it gets both of them in the poison. That's even better. He went ahead and uh, healed, I think the bottom group twice, then lets the queen finish off the top of the base. So everything meets up here. The king managed to go around the entire base without even having to use the ability. Right there, he pops the king. Plenty of hogs, plenty of uh, troops in general, both the heroes. Fast forward to the end here, nice attack by Jay Munez. 
one more base for you guys as we go on about 20 minutes almost here. Let's finish off this video with a witch attack at Town Hall 9. Let's take a look at the base. We'll go ahead and go into the replay and talk about it. Um, this base, first thing you gotta notice are the wizard towers, very centralized, very centralized wizard towers, and also both the expos at the top of the base. This is presenting a lot of value for a kill squad. If you look at um, an entry by this cannon, uh, a jump spell on top of the cannon will access both of these expos, and then a jump spell over like the wizard tower area will get bowlers into the core and can take out all of these defenses that are surrounding the core. So within this uh, CC queen compartment, there's so many defenses that are accessible. So it makes a great opportunity to use witches because the outer outside defenses like along here are mostly point defense, actually almost all point defense. The only splash damage besides uh, mortars, mortars are kind of on the outside of the base, but the main issue, which is the wizard towers and the bomb tower, those are all right in the core, accessible by a bowler kill squad, which makes it ideal for a witch attack, and that's exactly what Long Nikon does. Uh, healers on the witches, just to be safe, so they uh, don't die to double giant bombs, or not double giant bombs, they don't die to double, to, ah, to giant bombs, they don't die to just general point defense, keep those witches up even longer, then sends in the golems, uh, just one golem I think, it targets the mortar, then comes down, tanks that uh, those defenses, jump spell like I said on top of the cannon, then drops down the queen, the king, the CC bowlers, and sends them all in right here. The funnel is pretty good because the witches uh, started the funnel on both sides. Uh, they kind of split up a little bit at the bottom, but has enough up that they can take out pretty much the bottom of the base and start to move in, get some of those defenses taken out. So here come the heroes and the bowlers, a nice heal spell over those giant bombs. And like I said, that jump spell actually was over the clan castle. Um, my bad on that. A little bit farther over, but still gives them access to the same compartment here. Still can get in there to those wizard towers and basically allow the witches to kind of swing around the outside of the base and not have to worry about any of these splash damage inside the base. The queen lags behind because there was a lava hound in the CC, which is uh, one drawback on this attack. I don't know if this was a fresh hit. It probably was. Um, consider considering the queen did not uh, went in with the kill squad, if it was a cleanup, I my guess would be the queen would do a walk along one side of the base. Um, but that's one issue with this attack, um, and it makes it a little bit harder because the queen's stuck behind these walls, but she's still tanking the wizard tower, and the witches are still up along the outside of the base. I think all of the witches that were dropped at the top are still alive now on almost the bottom of the base. They've done a 180 pretty much and they still have one of their healers on them. The other healers have gone to the queen, which is actually kind of funny, like a mini queen walk at the end of this attack here. Uh, he's gonna go ahead and pop the ability in just a moment. There it goes. And these witches will clean up the bottom uh, buildings. Now it's all point defense, which makes it very easy for these witches uh, because all the splash damage was in, was in the core and these point uh, defenses can't shoot fast enough to kill the witches. So nice one there to long Niken or Niken. That will do it for this base identification video. Hope you learned some stuff about how to uh, look at bases when you scout them and how to attack them based off of that. Once again, uh, be sure to check out my Patreon page if you're interested and if you are planning on donating at some point, now is a good time to do it uh, because you can get access to that Patreon war and have some of your attacks live streamed on the channel and some other benefits like that. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys later. Bisectatron out.